So here we are again, and it has been two years since the last Technoparrot video that I made. And one might be wondering, what changes have been made to the Technoparrot program? But one of the more important things I want to show you is how accessories work with Technoparrot. I will show you a broad range of inputs and what will work and what doesn't work. And should you invest in peripherals for Technoparrot? I will be showing six peripherals that can be connected for the immersion in Technoparrot. Kicking off is this Logitech flight stick. There are a few arcade flight games. And we'll get this going with Blazing Angels, an arcade game by Ubisoft. Technoparrot still runs the same as always. You need an NVIDIA GPU to fully enjoy the graphics. Although some minor games can run on an AMD GPU. After dialing the joystick in the settings, I still can get the fly stick to recognize the upwards and downwards movement for this plane. I tried a lot of things. All buttons work, but uh, it's kind of mandatory to move a plane up and down. Let's try out another flight game, which is Afterburner Climax. The joystick is connected with a wire, not wireless. So in the Technopara menu, you have to select X input instead of direct input. The weird thing is that the up and downward movements aren't really recognized as well here. Everything else just works fine. I was thinking that my joystick was defective, but at some times the plane would go slightly up or down. Maybe this stick is a bit wonky after all. The last flight game that I'm going to try is Mock Storm. Mock Storm is actually a game that has to be played inside the original cabinet. Technoparrot forces a hack, so the original dome cabinet is forced into perspective of a monitor with a 16 by 9 ratio. It works perfect, and as you can see the upwards and downwards movements are being recognized. So what do I think of playing flight games on Technoparrot with a flight stick? Well it's kinda okay, to be honest. It's better for the immersion, but then again, I miss the full blast of audio explosions coming from all sides, and the physical movements some of these cabinets provide. Let's move on to the next peripheral. Most arcade games are played with an arcade stick. This is an 8-bit dough arcade stick, which should work perfect. Now one would say that the ideal game for playing with an arcade stick would be Contra. This is Contra Evolution. My dear viewers, this is the worst entry in the series I have ever seen. I mean the arcade stick works flawless for this game, just perfect. But I do have to say some more bad things about this horrible piece of software. These character rigging and animations are horrendously bad. The graphics and art design as a whole are not even mobile game worthy. I bet some mobile games that are free in the Android store look 10 times better. Next. Okay, so Pokken Tournament is a great test subject for dueling with the arcade stick. And uh, yup, this 8-bit dose stuff works just as well for this game. I love the clicky sound on the stick as well, and also the ruggedness. Another thing I have to mention quickly is that the controller is wireless set up via Bluetooth. You have to select the direct input instead of the X input for that in a Technoparrot menu. Some would complain about the possible lagging. I am not seeing any of that here. And I'm not playing on a competitive level against someone else. So it wouldn't be a problem for me. Another cool thing is that Technoparrot finds the newest updates automatically. It updates the program core and games list so you always have the latest. One of the simplest ways to enjoy Technoparrot is just with a joystick. I'm using an 8-bit dough wireless SM30 Pro controller here to begin with. I'm going to show you the same games, but also some other games to show and tell you the difference. Now Afterburner Climax works fine with the controller. Complete movement is being recognized up and down as well. The second worst game of the pack. There is even a more worse one that I'm going to show you, it works fine as well. I do like me some Tetris every once in a while, so it works perfect. Pocket Tournament works great, and to be honest, it's just a preference of input by this point. These 8-bit dough controllers work flawlessly. Let's change up the pace and try a racing game. This is Sega Rally 3. The controller works just fine. But I can brutally say that I like the previous installments better. I know this is an arcade game and so the game is a bit arcadey. But the cars feel like cardboard boxes that slip and slide over the track. Not a fan of this game, which is a shame because the game looks good nonetheless. Outrun Coast to Coast is a bit of an oldie and classic these days. The game has seen many iterations on consoles and with the joystick it works just as good. Pretty simple game as a time killer. I never heard of this game called Tokyo Cop. It looks cheesy as hell and when you still use the impact font for your user menus you know you messed up. The game itself is a toned down version of something like Chase HQ but in a midtown madness kind of like city. There isn't much great gameplay value here. You just ram the bad guy's vehicle once and you clear the level. 
I can really recommend this as something you should experience, just because of its sheer simplicity and the awful character animation graphics. SNK Heroines is another fighting game that looks great, especially if you're 12 years of age if you catch my drift. Game works fine with the joystick, I have no clue what I'm doing, so next. Just to show you some of the input delays and such, I used this wired Nintendo Switch joypad that also works on a PC. I felt no difference in delays and input, and this controller just works fine as well. Let's change up the game and let me show you something else. There are a lot of arcade shooter games. Technoparent has the option to register multiple and different inputs as a replacement for the light gun. The simplest would be just to use a joystick, since that's what's connected at the moment. So let's start with that. Far Cry Paradise Lost is such an arcade shooter game. I have never seen this game in the arcades. And oh boy, I'm glad I never did. This is even more horrible than the Contra game. It looks extremely outdated and plays as such. What a blasphemy, an ugly stain on the Far Cry franchise. Even worse is that the joystick isn't registered correct. So as you can see, I can only move the aiming cursor diagonally across the screen. A much easier way to play these light gun games is by using a mouse. If you have the room for it and want to set up a complete arcade experience at home, you could easily just program all the buttons on a light gun like the Sindin, mash that up with a foot pedal of some sorts, and you have more immersion than what I'm going to show you now. This must be the most dull experience I have ever done in my life of gaming. It's just floating around with the mouse cursor and holding down the fire button. Now Time Crisis is a game that needs you to do some more investment to spice things up, but I feel like the mouse isn't doing anything great for the light gun experience. And to compare Far Cry with this game, Transformers. This game is like centuries apart from the other one. Still, it's just moving the cursor around the screen with no real skill involved. There's also the thing where you can use a Nintendo Wii mode and a Nintendo Wii bar to register it as a light gun. And you know what? This is even worse. Why? Because it's just as crap as the mouse option. Only now I have to hold the mouse in the air instead of laying it flat. No comfort. Now race games are meant to be played with a racing wheel, so here's my racing rig set up with a Thrustmaster T300 racing wheel. My racing setup is on the other side of the room though, so I had to move my gaming PC to the other side as well to connect it to the wheel. Now again let's try Sega Valley 3. And it works! Sort of? Not really? It registers everything, but the sensitivity of the wheel isn't great. I had to set it way up high in Technoparrot, and still, this wasn't working great. Turning the wheel completely to the left or right doesn't feel realistic and way off. And the coil spring inside the wheel is all I'm feeling. Now I found some drivers that would essentially activate the force feedback, but I honestly have to say that I didn't have the time to try that option out. The problem with the wheel not registering correctly is a major flaw in racing games for me though. It feels unresponsive, thus ruining the arcade racing experience in my opinion. The worst is even in Tokyo Cop. It's pretty much unplayable in this state. So after all that, I have a few things to say about Technoparrot. Some people in the first video said they had a lot of problems with Technoparrot, especially saying that it's not user friendly. I partially agree with that statement. There's a lot of technical mumbo jumbo inside the settings. And if you're not familiar with some of the technical language, this will be a struggle for you. Then again, if you download Technoparrot, you already know what you're up against. In my opinion, Technoparrot is still user friendly. It's not as easy as a simple 16-bit emulator, but it's very easy enough if you have some computer experience. And now the moment of truth. Do all these peripherals add some functionality to Technoparrot? To be dead honest, only the joystick and the arcade stick added something to Technoparrot in my opinion. The flight stick added nothing to the immersion for me. And also the steering wheel added nothing for me as well. Let's not even talk about the mouse functionality or the Wiimote functionality. Then again, here's the actual point. Technoparrot is a great program for home usage. But like I said in a previous video, Technoparrot lacks the arcade immersion. Now I'm very lucky to have a lot of arcade venues in my country. So when I want to play arcade games I just go to one of those venues. Again Technoparrot is great for practicing. And that is all that Technoparrot is for me, at least. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, which I hope you do, leave a comment below and tell me what you think of Technoparrot and what your experience is with the program. Do like the video and even a subscribe is highly appreciated. And I'll see you on the next video.